massive amount of energy being released that it would destroy half of the continental United States. Yellowstone wakes up after Mount St. Helens earthquake. Land rises at an alarming rate. The spark from the Pacific Northwest, when Mount St. Helens stirred with renewed seismic tremors, scientists and the public alike turned their attention toward another volcanic giant far away. Yellowstone. The question arose quickly, could the quakes from St. Helens have rattled Yellowstone into waking? And with reports of ground uplift inside the Yellowstone caldera, speculation took off across headlines and social media. But beneath the drama lies a deeper story, one of geology, science, and the careful monitoring of one of the most powerful volcanic systems on Earth. A sleeping giant that still breeds. Yellowstone is no ordinary volcano. It is the remnant of a supervolcano that last erupted 640,000 years ago in the colossal Lava Creek event, ejecting more than 1,000 cubic kilometers of material over a thousand times greater than the 1980 Mount St. Helens eruption. While catastrophic, super eruptions are rare. Yellowstone is far from dormant. Scientists describe it as breathing the land within the Yellowstone caldera a vast bowl measuring 30 by 45 miles rises and falls in measurable cycles. These movements are caused not by imminent eruptions, but by magma movement, hydrothermal pressure, and ground water shifts within the crust. From the 1970s onward, Satellites and GPS stations have recorded remarkable episodes of uplift and subsidence that highlight just how alive this system remains. Between 1976 and 1984, the caldera floor near La Hardy's Rapids rose approximately 18 centimeters, 7 inches. Between 2004 and 2008, Uplift accelerated dramatically, with the ground rising as fast as 7 centimeters 3 inches per year around the Sour Creek and Mallard Lake domes. Since then, uplift and subsidence have occurred in waves, but none have indicated a catastrophic eruption. So when scientists noted approximately 1 centimeter of uplift since May 2025, the numbers drew attention, but context is crucial. Direct interaction of magma and water, magma causing water to flash to steam. The St. Helens Yellowstone. Connection. Science versus speculation. In June 2025, Mount St. Helens experienced a new swarm of small earthquakes. Almost immediately, rumors swirled. Could those tremors be linked to Yellowstone? Geologists are firm in their answer, no. While both volcanoes are located on the North American continent, they are separated by more than 700 miles and governed by different tectonic systems. Mount St. Helens is part of the Cascade Volcanic Arc, driven by subduction of the Juan de Fuca Plate. Yellowstone, on the other hand, is fueled by a mantle plume a deep thermal anomaly unrelated to S-U-B-D-U-C-T-I-O-N. Mike Poland, scientist in charge at the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, YVO, explains, worrying that St. Helens could trigger Yellowstone is like worrying that a crack in your front windshield will spread to the back window. They're completely separate. This distinction is vital. While seismic waves from distant quakes can indeed travel across continents, their energy dissipates quickly and is nowhere near powerful enough to destabilize a massive magma system. Like Yellowstone's, what the data really shows Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, 
a partnership between the USGS, University of Utah, and the National Park Service, tracks the supervolcano constantly with more than seismic stations, GPS arrays, satellite imaging, and thermal sensors. Their July 2025 report paints a calmer picture than the headlines suggest. Earthquakes, 52 minor quakes were recorded in July, the largest at magnitude to 0.8. These are well within Yellowstone's normal monthly range of 50 to 100 small quakes. Ground deformation, roughly one centimeter of uplift has been detected since late May, likely tied to seasonal changes from snowmelt and groundwater recharge, not magma movement. Alert status, Yellowstone remains at normal, the lowest alert level, with no signs of impending eruption. Scientists emphasize that a plift in Yellowstone is a routine part of its natural cycle, not an alarming rise signaling immediate danger. The real hazards of Yellowstone the term supervolcano often inspires catastrophic visions of ash clouds blotting out the sun, but scientists remind us that Yellowstone's most likely hazards are far less apocalyptic. Hydrothermal explosions, sudden steam-driven blasts from pressurized underground water are far more probable than a magma-driven eruption. These can hurl rocks and create craters hundreds of meters wide. Lava flows, Yellowstone has produced basaltic and rhyolitic lava flows in the last 70,000 years. While destructive locally, they pose nowhere near the global threat of a super eruption. Earthquake swarms, Yellowstone routinely experiences thousands of small quakes per year. Most are caused by fault movement or hydrothermal activity, not magma ascent, Yellowstone's breath, a planetary reminder. For now, Yellowstone is not erupting, nor is it being awakened by Mount St. Helens. Instead, it continues its long cycle of inflation and deflation geological breathing recorded by satellites orbiting hundreds of miles above Earth. The real story is not one of imminent catastrophe, but of continuous vigilance. Each tremor and each millimeter of uplift provide scientists with another clue about the inner workings of one of Earth's greatest natural systems, and in that vigilance lies reassurance.